In the four years of the KL Dragons, what has been your biggest highlight? Go ahead, Ruben. Oh, well, well, for me, it was season two. We were playing against the Brunei Barracudas. And uh, we were three points down with uh, 16 seconds to go. And, um, no, sorry, we were, we were six points down with, with 16 seconds. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. And, uh, and, and Patrick hit a, a three-pointer, which went in. No, sorry, it was three points down. Okay, clearly, I'm not doing this very well. But um, we were three points down, and Patrick uh, tried to hit a Patrick Cabo tried to hit a three-pointer, and he got fouled as he was taking the three-pointer, which means he had three free throws to tie the game. And uh, he he put all three of those free throws in, and we went to overtime, and then we actually won the game, basically. I think that was my best memory from the from the league. It was like the biggest comeback victory I've ever seen, and it was stuff made in like Hollywood, which you know, which you only think you see in the movies, but we actually saw it live. So that was my highlight for the last four. Well, Ruben saw it live. I was I couldn't I couldn't bear to watch. <laughs> I was on the bench just looking down. But yeah, that was that was that was pretty good. I think for me it was uh, probably last season. Um, first game, well, not well. First game. We'll start with the first game. Was uh, we played against San Miguel. And San Miguel are huge when it comes to basketball. They're like the Man U, Man City kind of thing. And we were like, what were QPR, we? I guess. QPR, I guess. Yeah, I didn't want to. I didn't want to say it, but he said it, so it's all good. So QPR, I guess. And uh, we actually came out and we won the game, uh, quite convincingly, the first game of the season last season. So that was probably one of the proudest moments for me. And um, adding on to that, uh, when they came to play us again at home, we actually beat them again at home. So, you know, um, just goes to show that with the team working together and playing well, um, we can challenge for the championship and, you know, we can, we, can, we can beat these guys. I think we beat them three times last year. Yeah, we did. Uh, it just fell apart in playoffs. But, um, you know, and, and, and it's also very nice to say that, um, to be able to say that actually they've, they kind of stole our player, our star player from last season is now with uh, San Miguel. So again, it, it, it's nice and, and, and for, for the team to be able to say that, you know, we found this guy from the States, we brought him to the ABL. And, uh, and you know, sort of the depth, that, uh, the depth and the, you know, what, what we go through before the, the season actually starts, before anybody sees what happens on the court, the work that goes into the team behind the scenes is, is what's important. And, to be able to say that, yeah, we found this guy, we brought him to the ABL, and now he's making a lot of money with San Miguel. So, you know, it's, it's nice to be able to say that. Where do you see the team in 10 years? Well, I think the league itself has to grow, and it, the league will grow. And uh, I'm sure within 10 years, we would have won a few championships by then. But I mean, that's what I, I see. Start, uh, starting this year. <laughs> starting this year. What was the main driving motivation for the formation of the KL Dragons? Uh, we were arm twisted, you know, both arms twisted behind our backs went to do this. Well, I was at least by uh, by by Tony and uh, who started the league, and then I, I arm twisted Mira. Yeah. His arm is still aching to now, four years later. So there you go. And um, and 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 that's Robin as well. So you know that that's the main motivation. But you know we we, we like. I like sport, they love basketball, so it kind of made sense. I think um, the way the league was set up, very professionally run um, and professional teams, we like the whole setup in, in that sense. And, and, and the fact that we're, we're driving it towards entertainment, I think that's the key part for, for me you know, um, as, as to why we should do something like this. Yeah, I guess for me, it's, you know, um, we, were, we were never a basketball nation, we were never thought of as a basketball nation. And uh, for us to be able to compete with, with the guys uh, within ASEAN and, and do well is, is, is what's, you know. What motivates you all to continue to support this team? It's just nice to watch the game. It's, yeah, really, it's, uh, it's actually really fun every week. I mean, every, every season is really, really fun. My, my customers love it. I love it. And my kids love it. So and I want to see it continue. Um, I think, you know, that's one of the key motivational factors. The second thing is that you know sports is actually growing as a business tremendously worldwide. Um, I think um, we went to a sports conference in the United States, a sports owners conference in the United States about two years ago, and and uh, one of the things they told me was that most of the sports um, companies or uh, broadcasters are all aligning themselves to our time zone. You know, um, not so much Malaysia, but because China is in the same time zone. Um, so you actually have 2 billion people watching on this time zone. So if we have a sporting event that's showing on this time zone, you can actually reach 2 billion people almost instantly. 
Right? And I believe Indonesia is going to change to this time zone as well. So that makes it even bigger. And um, and you know, so as a, as a point of entertainment, as a point of um, a business, I think sports is going to grow. And I think um, you know we want to be on that on that ticket as well. Mm-hmm.